hey, my video for the lesson was getting pretty long, so I wanted to do a separate video that talks about the homework that goes with Unit 1, Lesson 4. This homework should be done on September 24th, 2020. It is due on September 25th by the morning, by 8 o'clock in the morning. What we're after with this one is you need to talk of, or you need to explain the transformation that is taking place that will move figure P to figure Q. Like I showed in the video earlier with the lesson, I think it would be helpful to have a piece of tracing paper to help you identify the different kinds of transformations that you will need to use to take figure P or quadrilateral P. In this case, they call it polygon P, polygon P to polygon Q. Start by sketching this one in and if you have not used a piece of paper or if you don't have a piece of paper that you're using for tracing pause the video go get one because i think that this will be a really good strategy to help you out and for those of you that didn't leave or if you're back now welcome back here's the thing that i want to do i want to take figure p and i want to set it over top of figure q clearly they don't line up right now they don't map each other and so what I want to do is I think that there needs to be a rotation so I can see a hey, there's definitely a rotation. So I'm just going to give myself a little note that says rotation. I also know, oh, wait a minute, I had to move it over here first too, right? So that means I'm also working with the translation. So under that translation, I move it over to here. And the translation, of course, requires that I have corresponding points. I don't know what those are yet, but I do know that this lines up. And now I can figure out what all of the corresponding parts are. Point A and H are corresponding, D and G, F and C, B and E. I can pick any one of those to make my corresponding points for the translation and create any vector. I would like to use A to H just because it's fairly short. It's kind of close together. And I feel like I can describe a translation of point A to point H and then a rotation of however many de degrees that it's going to take to get there. Again, I can work on that. It's totally okay if you said, well, I know that there's going to be a trans or a rotation here, so you can figure out the rotation of however many degrees. Uh, I'm not going to give that to you. I would like for you to work for it, but I will remind you that on the isometric plane, every one of these little angles like this, every triangle, this angle is 60 degrees. So everything that you mark in there when you talk about a rotation should work in increments of 60 degrees. Don't forget to name your figure when you write this. So you say on here, translation, poly, or translate either one, polygon P, um, using points or a long vector, from point A to H, right? And then describe the rotation. For the next one, this one is kind of hard to see on my paper. So again, I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. And for the sake of time, I've actually already drawn this figure on another piece of paper. So here's where I wanted to start. Here's my figure. Again, the same strategy. Clearly, I need to move it over here, so there needs to be a translation. I'm going to mark that or just put a little note to myself that I need to have a translation. And then when I'm over here on top of it, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can rotate to make it fit. And I see there's no, there's no way I can rotate this to make it fit, but I clearly see that there's a rotation that's going to be needed. So at some point, I'm going to be using a rotation. Keep in mind that you're thinking 60 degrees as you go through this. And you're saying, is it just 60 or perhaps it's 120? But here's the other thing that I see. If it doesn't fit under rotation, that means I'm going to have to take a reflection in here as well. So it looks like I have three moves that I need to do. And so I'm going to be thinking translation. I'm going to be thinking rotation. And I'm also thinking of a reflection. It does not matter which one of these you start with. I want you to find your best strategy for which one it is. Maybe you like that idea and you say, well, I see that once I finally have this on here, I see corresponding points are A and F, B or J and B. Um, this one right here, I missed it. This one is C and I, H, you, you, know, you get the point. Find two corresponding points to be able to work off of, rotate around a specific point. Perhaps you want to say, you know what, I know the A and F are together, so I'm going to go ahead and translate here. 
then I'm going to rotate a certain number of degrees, and then I'm going to reflect. Find whichever one works the best for you. The final problem is simply two figures, P and Q, and we want to operate on the same principle that we started with. Again, I'm going to start here, I'm going to trace my figure, and I know that I'm going to have to do a translation because I need to move it from one point to another. Under that translation, I think, oh wow, oh, don't forget to put, give yourself a little note. I'm going to start with the translation, make sure it moves from corresponding points. I see on that one, that, that looks like a mirror image. I believe that I can just fold that over and I get the same image, image Q, and I know that I have a reflection. Coming up with a couple of little strategies to be able to figure out what these are will make your definitions, or excuse me, your descriptions a lot better. Please use your examples from the notes as sentence starters, and I believe that that will help make your description so much better. Um, I'm excited to see how you guys do on this. I hope that uh, the vocab stuff that you did with Quizlet and the practice on the transformation golf was very beneficial for you. I'm excited to see your results, and I thank you for doing the work that you're doing. Reach out to me through email or Hangouts, and we'll keep going with getting things done. Thanks for your hard work. Have a great day.